Acumatica 2017 R2 Feature Review, Unit of Measure and Pricing Improvements. The Acumatica pricing mechanism has been significantly improved to give users more ways to configure sales and vendor prices. The major changes are the ability to configure warehouse-specific prices, to upload prices by alternate IDs, to specify price adjustment multipliers, to specify cross-reference units of measure, and also the ability to calculate discounts in different units of measure. Many distributors know that the costs of storing items can be different in various warehouses. Those costs can vary because of the transportation costs to get the item to the warehouse, or possibly warehouse space could be more expensive near a big city. With Acumatica 2017 R2, you can now configure warehouse-specific pricing that accurately reflects those costs. Alternate ID improvements allow for units of measure to be defaulted based on cross-references. For example, if a vendor stocks two units of measure for bottled water, each is in 24 packs, then Acumatica can recognize both alternate IDs and assign the appropriate unit of measure for pricing. If an alternate ID has the cross-reference unit of measure specified, that unit of measure will be used in any document in which a user specifies the inventory item by using this alternate ID. For this feature review, it's also important to get an understanding of Acumatica's price selection priority list. Here we see the priority list that Acumatica selects for sales prices, as well as the price selection priority list for vendor prices. To begin, we'll take a look at warehouse-specific pricing. The tables on the AR Forms Sales Price Worksheets, Sales Prices, Vendor Prices, and Vendor Price Worksheets all now have the Warehouse column added, in which a user can specify the warehouse to which the price applies. In this example, I have taken the Acer laptop computer and added $50 onto the base price whenever we sell out of the retail warehouse, bringing the total price to $550. Anytime we sell the item without a warehouse specified, the total price will be $500. To demonstrate, we'll create a new sales order for one of our customers. When we add the line item, the Acer laptop, to the sales order, we will see that at first we have defaulted to our wholesale warehouse, so the total price is $500. If we decide to sell the item out of our retail warehouse, you will see that the price increases to $550 to account for the cost of selling from that warehouse. Next, we will take a look at price adjustment multipliers. On the sales order preferences screen, we have added a checkbox to use a price adjustment multiplier. When we have checked the price adjustment multiplier box, on the stock item record, we add a field to add in the conversion factors and price adjustment multipliers for our various units of measure. In this exaggerated example, I've used a conversion factor of 100 each time I sell a box with a price adjustment multiplier of 0.9. As an example, on a new sales order, I've added the line item we just added a price adjustment multiplier for, which is Powerade. When I try to sell by my eaches, I can see that the unit price is $1.10. When I select boxes as the unit of measure to sell by, I can see that the unit price jumps up to $99 based on the price adjustment multiplier and the conversion factor that I have set. This feature allows you to calculate multiple prices for multiple units of measure while only maintaining one stock item record. Finally, we will take a look at alternate ID improvements. On both the Accounts Receivable Preferences and Accounts Payable Preferences forms, we have added a checkbox to load sales prices by alternate ID or to load vendor prices by alternate ID. This means that a user can now make it possible to upload prices and worksheets by alternate IDs instead of item IDs. On the stock item record for my Powerade item, under the Cross References tab, I have created alternate ID settings. One is a global alternate ID using the key PWAID. Another one is a vendor part number ID for a specific vendor using their specific vendor ID number. Anytime I use this alternate ID for this vendor, I will also default to a box as my unit of measure. On my sales price worksheet screen, I can now enter in the alternate ID for the item that we just entered a cross-reference for. Using the alternate ID for Powerade, PWAID, I can see that the inventory ID has been recognized by Acumatica and has also defaulted to the specific unit of measure that I set for this alternate ID. 
For my vendor example, I can now enter the external vendor IDs from my vendors in order to recognize the alternate IDs within Acumatica. Once again, you'll notice that the box has been recognized as the unit of measure that we selected for this alternate ID. Thank you for joining me today for this high-level overview of unit of measure and pricing improvements in Acumatica 2017 R2. For more information, please contact your local Acumatica reseller or reach out to us at info at acumatica.com.